In this lecture, I will present the ongoing debate on open science, which is driving change in how research results are disseminated. The term open science indicates that no barriers should hinder diffusion of publications and the associated artifacts. To better understand the motivations that drive this evolution, let us step back and revisit how the traditional publications word works. Research is mainly supported by public investments through grants, research salaries and scholarships. Researchers are not remunerated for spreading research results. It is one of their duties and their return is in terms of knowledge, recognition and prestige. Copyright for their publications is transferred to the publishers. This is often justified by the claim that publishers can do a better job than authors of protecting their rights and coordinating permissions for reprints. Publishers sustain the costs of advertising, managing the editorial process, printing and distribution, and electronic archiving. Researchers further sustain the publication process by providing voluntary unpaid support to the reviewing of papers. Research institutions, as well as individual researchers, must pay a subscription fee to access published material. An institution does that also for its own financed research. Subscription fees, which may include access to digital libraries, are substantial. At the same time, research institutions increasingly face with cost reduction problems. This traditional approach to disseminating science has problems. First, researchers became increasingly critical about unconditional copyright transfer to publishers and used their influence to evolve towards a license to publish, edit, print, distribute commercially, while authors retain other rights themselves. Today, even if publishers retain the copyright to an article, most publishers allow certain rights to authors. As an example, let's see the policy adopted by the ACM, a premier publisher in the field of informatics. Authors have the right to post the accepted version of the work on first, the author's home page. Second, the owner's institutional repository. Third, any repository legally mandated by an agency funding the research on which the work is based. And fourth, any non-commercial repository or aggregation that does not duplicate ACM tables of contents, that is, whose patterns of links do not substantially duplicate an ACM copyrighted volume or issue. This policy change has been dictated by the progress in digitalization that occurred since the 1990s. The web made it possible to post and share papers online, eliminating printing costs, making distribution instantaneous, unlimited, with no borders and potentially free. Readers could access and download any research result without barriers. Forbidding authors from sharing their publications would have been nonsense. The opportunities generated by digital publishing, however, had a more profound influence. Researchers started objecting to the traditional way of managing and regulating access to knowledge which remains locked behind technical, legal, financial barriers. At the same time, technology showed that immediate knowledge sharing is possible through many channels and allowed everybody to access and create new knowledge. This has generated the current evolution towards open access. The emergence of new ways of publishing and even changes in the business model of traditional publishers. 
archive is the first example of an online public repository of scientific papers. It was initially designed in 1991 and is extremely widely used today by researchers as a public repository where they can store and share research reports and even preprints of papers published on traditional journals or conference proceedings. What makes a work product open access? It must satisfy four requirements. Available in digital form, available online, free of charge, this is also called gratis, free of most copyright and licensing restrictions, and this is also called Libre. A software is Libre if some additional permissions other than free online access are guaranteed to users through some kinds of permissive licenses, for example, Creative Commons. In other terms, authors retain some rights rather than all rights. These are examples. CC0 assigns the work to the public domain. In this case, one waives all rights, including those of attribution of the work to oneself. CC BY allows any use, provided the user attributes the work to the original author. CC BY SA allows others to remix, tweak, and build upon the work even for commercial purposes, as long as they credit the author and license their new creations under the identical terms. There are two ways of implementing open access. Gold open access and green open access. Gold open access means that the author publishes his or her work in an open access journal which makes it immediately and freely accessible online. To make the process economically viable, there are cases in which publishers ask authors to pay a publication fee. In other cases, the costs of open access publishing are covered by subsidies or other funding models. Green open access instead means that the author self-archives a published and reviewed paper in an open access repository, such as Archive. In this case, the author can publish the paper in a traditional journal, deposit a preprint in a public repository. Depositors are responsible for obtaining the needed rights or permission on their own. Define the conditions under which the paper may be accessed in accordance to the original publisher. Define additional use conditions based on own retained rights. What we discussed for papers holds for other artifacts as well. The principle of open data applies to datasets. This means that the data produced by the research should be freely available to everyone to use and republish if they wish without restrictions from copyright, patents, or other mechanisms of control. Likewise, if the artifact is a piece of software, the principle of openness applies to software as well. In particular, the software is defined to be open source if its source code is released under a license in which the copyright holder grants user the rights to study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose. This concludes a series of lectures that focused on how the results of research can be made public. This is a very crucial process and is at the heart of research. Although cases where research is privately funded and research results are proprietary also exist, by and large, research is a public, open and social process whose results are for the benefit of society. In later lectures, we will discuss how publication of research results 
relates to the progress of researchers and how it affects the overall perception of value of research in society.